Okay, another special type of graph is a bipartite graph. So bipartite graphs, um, the terminology bipartite, that word comes from uh, the notion of a bipartition. Remember, a partition is like a, a, a way of t breaking down a set into a bunch of non-overlapping subsets. So a bipartite graph is one where the vertices can be partitioned into two non-overlapping sets that have a certain property. Let's look at a quick example. So here is an example of a bipartite graph. Uh, and the thing that makes this bipartite, the rule is that uh, you can break it down into two, two um, sets, and our sets here are A, B, C. Those are the one set of vertices, and then D, E, F. And then within any one of those sets, so within the set A, B, C, there are no edge connections. So none of those vertices are adjacent to one another. You can see A, B, and C are, there's no edges. Same with D, E, and F. Within that subset, there are no edge connections at all. The only edge connections go across between subsets. That's what bipartite means. So this right here, oops, sorry. Um, this right here is our bipartition of the vertex set. For, for that graph. So um, let's look at uh, another another quick example. Um, I'll draw it. There we go, okay. So um, here's an example graph, and uh, we're gonna see if we can figure out if this graph is bipartite or not. So in order to do that, I'm just going to attempt to make to make a bipartition of it. So uh, let's start with the vertex A. Um, we've got to put it somewhere, so I'm just going to put it in this first set right here. Now, if I put vertex A in that first set, then that means that vertex F is going to have to be in a different set, right? Because they're adjacent to each other. So if this is going to be bipartite, they have to be in different different subsets in the partition. So F has got to be down here. Uh, all right, so now I can continue with this logic. If I know F is in the um, in the second set here, then anything adjacent to F has to be back in the first set. So that would be a black one. So that would be A, right? We already have A, but also B and E. B and E need to be in that set as well. Now let's double check. So far, A, B, and E, we're assuming they're in the same subset uh, for our bipartition. And uh, if that's true, there can't be any edge connections between them. And that is indeed true. None of the possible edge connections between A, B, and E uh, exist. So, so far we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and circle these ones. Black, there we go. Uh, and now I'll continue the logic. Um, so if, uh, if B is in the first subset, uh, then anything adjacent to B has to be in the second subset. So that would include C. Right, so uh, C is going to have to be circled red. There we go. Um, and let's double check that that works. F and C are not adjacent to each other. Uh, so, so far we're fine. Let's look at E. Anything adjacent to E would have to be in the second subset, but that's just C, and we've already done that. Um, and now let's look at our new one we just added to the set, C. Anything adjacent to C has to be in the other subset, which would be just D would be over there. Uh, and then let's double check. D is D adjacent to anything that's already in the set we uh, we we we've been we've created up there? Well it's not adjacent to A, B, or E. So it's good. There we go. So um, what I just did there is I just walked through an algorithm for um, determining whether or not a a a graph is bipartite. Um, and uh, you can probably imagine uh, taking that algorithm I did, uh, so taking the first vertex and putting it in one of the two subsets and then kind of alternating between black and red and then black and red and kind of going back and forth and uh, figuring out, well, if this is in one set, this, because it's adjacent, has to, be, has to be in the other set and so on. And then you're continually checking to make sure that you're, you're still satisfying the rule as you go. That algorithm could be pretty easily programmed 
uh, written into a program. You could write that out in pseudo code. You could program that into C++. Um, if you had a graph represented somehow, um, you know, stored somehow in your in your computer data. So we're going to get to that a little bit later. How do you actually store a graph as you know some sort of uh, object in a program for a program to work with? But anyway, um, this was kind of a, a, a lot of work, right? Uh, there are some theorems that can tell you whether or not a um, a graph is bipartite. So we're going to go through two of those theorems. The first, the first one is, uh, and this is specifically for simple graphs. Oh shoot! I'm sorry. Let me pause and fix that. Ugh. Okay, there we go. And like I was saying last time, I loathe touch screens so much. I mean, I get that they're all the rage, and I get that they're useful, but uh, yeah, getting old or something. All right, so uh, a simple graph. These two theorems are going to apply only to simple graphs. Um, so the first is that a simple graph is bipartite if only if it is what is called too colorable. So too colorable means that it's possible to to basically identify uh, colors with your vertices. So sort of label the vertices with colors, and co it doesn't have to be colors. You could use of any labels you want. We just call them colors because that's kind of a good mental image of what you're doing. Right. But basically, you can color the vertices with two colors such that no two adjacent vertices are ever the same color. And if it's possible to do that, then you know that your graph is bipartite. And that's what we just did with that previous example. Right. We were checking to see if it's bipartite, but we also was, uh, ended up doing a two colorization of that graph. Right. Making sure uh, vertices of the same color are never adjacent. This topic of graph coloring is also part of that other um, of that other presentation that uh, one of our teams is doing. Um, and there's a really famous application of graph coloring, uh, you know, applying that to uh, maps, map making. It is called the well. I'll leave it to that group to to tell, tell us about that. So the other theorem is another way to check to see if a graph is bipartite. Um, is that a simple graph is bipartite if and only if it does not contain a particular subset uh, an odd cycle So remember, we just learned about cycle, right? A cycle is when you have some number of vertices that are all connected, uh, you know, all around one to the next, and it make, forming like a cycle, a loop sort of thing. Um, so an odd cycle would be a cycle using an odd number of vertices. So looking back over here in this graph, this graph does have a cycle. Uh, if we look at uh, vertices B, C, E, F, they form a cycle. But that is an even cycle, and even cycles are fine. If, however, you ever had an odd cycle, okay, so let's just make an example of an odd cycle over here. Let's do a cycle on five vertices. You had an odd cycle, and you were attempting to do a two colorization of this to, to, to check to see if it's bipartite. Take a first vertex and, and pick a color for it. Let's make that vertex red. Uh, the next vertex would have to be blue. And then we'd have to alternate. But since we have an odd number, eventually we would get back to um, the last vertex, and it would be the same color as the first vertex, thereby uh, making this not a valid two colorization of this graph. Uh, so this would not be a bipartite graph, because these three red vertices would have to be in the same subset but then this adjacency that I just scribbled through right here, that one would break the rule. So anytime you have a subgraph, that would be like a portion of your graph, like some subset of vertices with some subset of edges that involve those vertices. If that odd cycle is part of your graph, then 
it's definitely not. It's guaranteed not to be um, bipartite. But what's interesting about this theorem is that it's actually also an if and only if theorem, meaning not only is this saying that an odd cycle is going to um, guarantee that it's not bipartite, as long as you don't have an odd cycle, you can guarantee that it is bipartite, which is a pretty significant uh, si significant result, I would say. So um, that's a pretty powerful one. Um, we are going to use this idea of finding subgraphs of certain types, uh, not just for checking bipartite, but also for another topic coming up called graph isomorphism. So, um, so just be ready for that. All right, I think that pretty much does it for section 10.2. I'm going to sign off and then uh, see you in the next one.